Make my boners grow. Wait, no, I don't want to start that way. Make my minions grow. That's... Okay, really getting my inner reader repulsa on. Oh, hello, and welcome once again to Citanium Mine. And on this episode, we're raising the dead. Yeah. Well, in a game. Not in real life. Uh, yet yeah. on this episode, we are going to be talking about Bone Razor Minions, a game that exists. So there's that. Last year, I gave my Game of the Year award to Vampire Survivors, a ridiculously addictive and simple game that uh, asks you to basically try to survive for a time period without dying, and waves upon waves of enemies flood down upon you in ever-increasing fashion. It's a great game. And it still just kind of haunts me from the fact that it was as good as it was for doing such a simple gameplay loop as it did. And of course, this means that there are bound to be some other games that want to emulate Vampire Survivors for what it did. And Bone Razor Minions kind of does that. And unfortunately, it doesn't really do it as well. The conceit in this particular game, though, is that you are a necromancer of sorts, and you get upgrades, not like weaponry upgrades, but you get upgrades to create minions. And the minions do the fighting for you. So, like, if you had vampire survivors, you would get all these weapons, and as you move around, the weapons shoot off in all different directions and everything, and kill enemies for you. And in Bone Razor Minions, what they do instead is they say, uh, you summon or you um, bone fuse, which is basically where you take multiple minions that you have and turn them into large minions. Those minions are wandering around the landscape with you and doing the fighting themselves. You don't really do any of the fighting. You don't have a lot of weaponry, except for some special power-ups if you accrue them. There are a couple additional mechanics that they add in as well. For instance, you get the ability to dash, uh, and you can dash through enemies, even getting some invincibility frames when you do so. You also get the ability to cast some spells. Those are very random, and uh, I, that kind of makes sense because, you know, randomness is part of this ever-increasing genre, but the fact of the matter is, is that when you take a, one of those spells and you utilize them, it goes away forever, and you just hope to accrue some more over the course of time. I found that it was not something I utilized very often, and uh, didn't really see much need for. Something that is interesting is, unlike a Vampire Survivors, which, yes, I am going to be comparing these two because it is very close as an analog, unlike Vampire Survivors, which will have these really big, basically endless maps that you explore, Bone Razor Minions basically creates these landscapes that you can then set up traps inside of that are very contained. They're actually almost claustrophobic in the size by comparison. But it also allows you to create a bunch of different things on that battlefield that will aid you. This battlefield isn't someplace you're trying to survive so much as it is a fortress you are trying to defend. Throughout the game, you also unlock these different archetypal characters that you can play. You're, you're always playing the same character, but you have essentially different classes that you are able to unlock. And I ended up taking Vampiric Survivor, I believe is what it's called, which is basically gain life as you attack your enemies and regenerate health. But there are other archetypes that you get that allow you to maybe get more giant 
minions on the board for you, or uh, maybe uh, help you when you have very specific kinds of minions that you want to summon. It is very randomized, not at all easy, and trying to find a sweet spot of how you want to play the game can be a little tricky, to be honest with you. One of the things that kind of took me out of the experience, though, is that when you're choosing between different options, it's not very user-friendly in terms of what these, these things can do. You get a lot of different minions that you can summon, but it's a little tricky to understand exactly what they're going to do. Uh, especially when you start to upgrade them to, like, demonic variants, or uh, if, you, if you get, like, the giant archers. And the thing that's particularly annoying is that the minions are pretty much acting independently of you. You don't have nearly the direct control of them as you do in A Vampire Survivors. Moreover, they throw a lot of different artifacts and such to you in each run, but I didn't really care which ones I picked, and usually many of them are situational, like uh, your, your minions, one specific kind of minion will run a little faster or something like that, and so I stopped really caring about which types of upgrades I was taking for the most part, and I still can't really name any of them for you. And then the graphics. Uh, so it is a pixel graphic game in similar fashion to Vampire Survivors. It does not feel nearly as distinct. This doesn't have so much the NES flair that VS did. It has much more of like an Atari 2600 sort of look to it. And it's not necessarily bad, but it just feels chunky. Chunky in a way that becomes obfuscating when you're playing it. What I mean by that is, when you're dealing with these mobs of enemies that are coming onto the screen, and your minions that are wandering around the screen, differentiating between the ones that are there to help you, and the ones that are not, becomes near impossible. There is no real color coding on any of this. Uh, which, you know, if we were going back to the Atari era, I, I would think, you know, maybe you could incorporate something of that nature. That would be great. But they don't really do that. Uh, instead, there are all these kind of amorphous brownish or, you know, purplish blobs. And, they're, and, and they might be your friends or they might be your enemies, but they don't have enough distinct qualities to them, in part because of the graphics and how blocky everything is, and in part because the, the graphic design doesn't differentiate very well between the allies and enemies, that I found myself often running into the enemies when I was th thinking that they were my friends, and I, I'd end up with all of these creatures that I'd walk up to thinking to myself, wait, did I summon you? Or are you one of the horde of enemies that just came onto the screen? It gets even more confusing because there are upgrades that will add different kinds of enemy types. And some of those enemy types are very similar to some of the summons that you'll get or the spells that you will use. There's bats and birds and everything that might attack you. But at the same time, you get a lot of spells that allow you to utilize bats. So now what bats am I worried about? Uh, it, it's just, it starts to get very confusing. One of the brilliant things about Vampire Survivors was that even though the graphics were like old school pixel graphics, even though the levels were continuously repetitious in how they were laid out, even though it was a very simplistic way of designing a game where pretty much all you do is just walk in a direction, they made sure that there were distinct qualities to the different icons 
and monsters that were there so that you knew when the really big bad guys were coming and you knew what the different weapon icons were. So I, I immediately can recognize them and I know which ones I like and I know which ones I don't and it's easy to clearly and quickly identify things that are on the screen. The problem with Bone Razor Minions is that it does not do a very good job of that. And since it is sort of core to the mechanics of the game being played, it doesn't really work as well. And I think the bigger problem is, again, when you have all of these minions that you're summoning, they clutter up the entire experience in this very small arena that you're fighting where I don't know who my allies and enemies are and I have less direct control over where my attacks are going than I even did in Vampire Survivors. It's not a bad version of that sort of a game, but it ain't it, Chief. <laughs> it's, it's not it. You know, this is the part of the episode where I tell you about a game you can play instead, and I mean, you know what it's going to be. It's Vampire Survivors. You just play Vampire Survivors instead. Uh, Bone Razor Minions is, is, is a fine enough game. If you happen to have it or you um, want to try it out, great. It's got some interesting concepts, and everybody loves to summon stuff, but at the end of the day, it's it, Vampire Survivors is just far more addictive, gets the gameplay loop down in far better fashion, really makes it far more airtight and gives you a lot of these wonderful hidden secrets and stuff that just keep it replayable um, much, much longer. All right, well, we raised the minions of the damned in a graveyard, and now I must send you away. Go! Flee! Fly, you fools! Away from the minions that get bone-raised. The name of the game... It, the, the name of the game was Bone Razor Min I don't know why they called it that. I think so that they could make a lot of boner jokes. I'm pretty sure that's what the whole point was. If you play it, you'll know. Tr oh, you've already lost interest. <laughs>